Hey, how's it going? And today we are going to explore the mysterious world of color and opacity and foreground color on the user widgets or the widget blueprints. I'm just in a third person template right now. And if I right click and I go to user interface and I go to widget blueprint, user widget, we're just going to create a user widget here. Now, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but by default, it's set to the widget blueprint itself. And if I select that, you'll notice that there's a color and opacity and a foreground color here. And this was very, very confusing to me. And I haven't been able to find very much documentation about this. And everything that I'm sharing with you are things that I've just discovered by experimentation with this. So the first thing that I'd like to talk about is this color and opacity. And if we hover over it, it says the color and opacity of this widget tints all child widgets. It's interesting that it says tints all child widgets and not colors all child widgets, right? So to see what this does, let's get a canvas panel and drag this onto the scene. And then let's just get a border. Let's get a border here. And let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. So I'm going to go over four things that I've discovered about this. So the first thing is this color and opacity. If it's set to white, which it is, which is 111, that means it has no tinting effect. And if you think about that, that makes sense because if you just look at basic math and you go 1 times 4 equals 4, 1 doesn't have any effect on 4. It's still 4. 1 times 4, 1 times 1,000 is still 1,000. So this color, when it's set to 1, or white, 111 white, it's having an effect, but it's not having an effect. I mean, it's there. Because look, if we go to the alpha and set the alpha to zero, it clears everything out. So the alpha is having an effect, but the color white doesn't have any tinting effect. It's not really having a tinting effect. So if this is set to 111, notice what happens the minute that I start moving this. It starts changing the color of the border right here. So it changes color. It's tinting the border. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this back to white. Now I want to show you something. If we look at the border, the border is all white too. right? So we can see from our little experiment that this is in fact doing what it says it's doing. It's tinting all the child widgets beneath it. But if it's all white, it doesn't have any effect. But this tinting effect is always on. There's no way to disable it. It's just always on. It's either not having effect by being white, or it's tinting all the child widgets. I never really knew that. Now let's look at this foreground color. What does it say? It says the foreground color of the widget that it, this is inherited by sub widgets. Any color property that is marked as inherit will use this color. I had a question about what is this actually inheriting from? And I honestly don't know what this is inheriting from, but I can tell you one thing, the color that it's inheriting is gray. So let's look here. Right now, if we look at the border, right? We have the border color here. And it has a, a tint color. And we can change the color of the border down here. You see this? We can make it red right here. Right? So this border is now red on its own. But if we click Inherit, right, it's supposed to take on the color of the foreground color. So what? watch what happens when I hit Inherit. It turns gray. Why does it turn gray? because that's the color that the foreground color is inheriting, is gray. I think that somewhere down in the system, because if we come and look at like a button here, if we look at a button, you'll notice it's by default, it has a gray color too. So I'm just thinking that somewhere deep in the system, somewhere maybe in a C++ class, it's inheriting a gray color. Because if we go to the button and it's inheriting the foreground color, but the foreground color itself is set to inherit, 
it's inheriting gray. So if we if we set this to not to inherit, we turn this off. Look, the border turns purple because it's inheriting the oops, the border is set to inherit. So even though it's set to red, it's inheriting the color from the foreground color. So if we toggle this switch off, it goes to gray, meaning that the foreground color is somewhere inheriting a gray color from where I don't know where. It's not getting it from the color in opacity. But if we toggle it off and on, you see that we're toggling off and on. So inherit, it's getting the gray color. Here, it's getting this color. If we change this color to green, now it's green. So that all makes sense, right? So setting the foreground color to not inherit means it has no effect unless the children beneath it are set to inherit. It doesn't matter what this color is, it's not going to have any effect if the children beneath it are not set to inherit. So that's interesting. And then we also discovered, like if I put this back to inherit, we've also discovered that if we set the foreground color to inherit, that color is gray. Interesting. And the last thing that I wanted to show you today is that if we come on the graph here, you can search for a node called set foreground color here. And then if I pull off of here and go make slate color, and notice by default it's that pinkish color. But let's say I make this yellow, right? And then I plug this in here. So I set the foreground color here using the event preconstruct and I compile and save. And I come back in here to the designer view and come here to the widget blueprint. Notice how it's set the foreground color now. And look, it's disabled inherit. I can't click there anymore. So setting the foreground color node disables the inherit function here. It's yellow too, right? Because it's on inherit. And I turn it off, it's red. So anyway, it's very interesting. The main thing to know about this is that the, the whole purpose of this would be to save time. Because if you set up your widgets and colored them based on this, then all you'd have to do is change the colors here. And then they it would affect everything beneath it. So ultimately, using these controls here on the widget blueprint itself are going to save you a lot of time. So it's something to explore, something to consider. It's it's very, very interesting because for the longest time I saw this was here, but I never really explored it or checked it out. So anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope you found it helpful. Take care. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.